welcome grade 12s. Today we're going to do some revision. So we've done a lot of physics and chemistry this term already. So we're going to look at revising your momentum and your vertical projectile motion and of course the organic. Now I wish we could do everything we've done this whole term but you know it's been a long term so we're going to get through as much as we can and what this means is you're going to do a lot of the work today, okay? So I hope you guys are ready. So let's start with physics. We're going to start with vertical projectile motion. So here's, the, we're going to look at the question. It is there. There we go. And what I have for you is a question with a graph. And graph skills, grade 12s, have become incredibly, incredibly, incredibly important, okay? They are going to ask you about graphs, whether it be in momentum, whether it be work energy and power, whether it be in electricity, you're going to get graphs in your physics paper without, without, without a doubt, okay? And your graphing skills are important from being able to draw a graph, from being able to interpret a graph, all of those sort of things. So it's really important that you get this, which is why I've chosen this question, okay? Now, the question says to us, and I want you to have a look at it before I give you time to do anything, that a ball is released from a certain height. The velocity time graph below represents the motion of the ball as it bounces vertically on a concrete floor. The interaction time of the ball with the floor is negligibly small, so we can just ignore it. And then there's the graph. Okay, so there's the graph. And from this graph, you're going to need to interpret some stuff. So it's going to be all sorts of things from distance to number of bounces to all of those sort of things, okay? So I'm going to give you three minutes okay what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave the graph on for a little bit then I'm gonna show you the question alright so I'm gonna give you three minutes to answer the questions and then we're gonna see how far you get okay so you ready make sure you're looking at the graph okay and your three minutes is gonna start now
So, grade 12s, how did we do? I hope you did okay. I hope you got through most of that. I know it's rather quick, and I do understand that, you know, it just feels like we rush you a little bit with these, but it is about making sure you get through as much of this as we can. And so let's just go back to the question. Ooh, I'm not I'm not sure what I'm doing here, but it's all right. That's nothing new. Anyway, so here we have a bouncing ball. Now, there's a couple of things you need to get from this as soon as you start. They told you that the ball is released from a certain height and then allowed to bounce. So what we see from this is that, number one, it's released from a certain height, so initial velocity is zero. And then they plot the graph so your velocity is positive. That means they have chosen down as your positive direction. You have no choice now in these questions as to choose down as your positive direction. So no matter what we do, no matter what calculations we do, down has to be the positive direction, okay, because of the graph. So that's the first thing. Then we go, then we look at this and we go, well, what happens here is the ball's going to increase in velocity as it goes down until this point. Then there's a sudden change. And now it starts again and it's negative. Now that negative at 0,4 seconds tells me that it's actually hit the ground and now it's changing direction because it's now negative. And I said anything going down is positive, so now anything going up is negative, okay? Now before you get all like, oh, but if it hits the ground, it's got to stop. It stops for a fraction, like a minuscule moment in time, and then it changes direction. We're ignoring that, okay? Then it bounces again. At this point over here, at it's almost 0,7 seconds, it's going to have reached the top of its motion again, and now it turns over. Over here, at one second, it changes direction again, so it bounces. It's at the top of its motion at 1,2, and then at 1,4, it hits the ground and stops. Okay? Really, there probably should have been a line going down there, because what I'm showing is that there's no continuing motion, so there it stopped. So now we look at this and we go, okay, that actually means that there were two bounces. Be very careful. It hits the ground three times, but it only bounces twice. There's only two points where it changes direction, okay? So that's really important. Then on a graph like this is we need to remember that a velocity time graph is incredibly useful for us. Remember that the gradient of a velocity time graph always gives us acceleration. So this is free fall, so it really should give us 9,8 when we calculate it. And the area gives me displacement. And because this is a, a vertical motion question, then the area is going to give me delta y, not delta x. If I want a distance, I would just ignore the, the direction, okay? So that's fine. Now we can go to the question. It says to me, describe the changes, if any, in velocity and acceleration of the ball from t equals naught to t equals four seconds, okay? So let's just, I think I've got space, no, let's go back there. I've got space over here to explain it. What happens here? From naught to naught comma four seconds. Number one, it's in free fall. So acceleration's not going to change, and it's accelerating due to gravity, so it's going to be 9,8 meters per second squared down. Velocity is going to go from zero to four down. Okay? So velocity changes okay, from zero meters per second to four meters per second, and it's going down. That doesn't change. Acceleration is a constant 9,8 meters per second squared down. Okay, that's all they want to change in velocity, change in acceleration. We're all happy. They didn't want anything else from that. They didn't ask about the bounces. And we're just making sure that we get how the velocity changes. And the big thing that they're looking for here is that you recognize that that's constant. Okay, it's a straight line. Now, question two. 
This is a really important question, and there's a reason why I've chosen it, because it says, without equations of motion, calculate the height from which the ball was dropped initially. If you use equations of motion, grade 12s, you will get naught. Because you're not, yes, you're going to get the right answer, and you have more than enough information to do that, but they are specifying method. So we are testing whether you understand what we can do with the graph. So they only want the height from which it was dropped initially. So that is this part of the graph, okay? Because at 0, 0, 0, 0,4 seconds, it's now hit the ground. So that part of the graph, that line, represents the distance it's fallen. Now we're looking at area because that means displacement. So I want the area of this part of the graph. And that happens to be a triangle. So now we've got to remember some of our maths and some of us are like, oh, I can't remember the area of a triangle. Guys, you've got to know it's not going to be on your information sheet. So we want displacement. So we want the height. And that height is going to be equal to the area under the graph, OK? And in this case, that happens to be a triangle. And we remember that to get the area of a triangle, it's a half base times height. So this is going to be a half times. And it was 0, 0,4 was the base. That was the time. And the height was 4. And I would expect you to do this on your calculator. Please don't do it in your head if you can't. Please don't feel bad if you can't do it in your head. But it's a half times 0, 0,4, which is 0, 0,2. 0, 0,2 times 4 is 0, 0,8. So it's dropped from a height of 0, 0,8 meters. OK, guys, you have to show me those two. You have to tell me height is area under the graph. You have to obviously do your um, substitution. And then don't forget your units. OK, and I don't need to put a direction on this because it's the height from which it was dropped. We know what it was dropped from, OK? But we would be so lucky that this is all they ask. Never. So now, they add to this. Now, the next part of this question is this. It says, use the given velocity time graph for the motion of the ball. So what we've got to sketch the corresponding position time graph for the time interval 0 seconds to 0, 0,7. So, 0, 0,7 seconds was here, OK? So we said it went down. Ooh, that's red. That's, that's black. Let's go here. Goes down, hits the ground, changes direction, goes up and stops. Down is my positive direction, OK? So now we look at this and we go, fine. Delta Y, it starts from a positive height. So I know it starts up here somewhere. The nice thing about these diagrams, actually, is what I really like about them, is they actually look like what it says. Is we have a ball that's bouncing, hits the floor, and then bounces up to 0, 0,7. What they're looking for here is the shape that you've got the curve, because it's accelerating, so your velocity is changing, number one. Number two, that it bounces at 0, 0,4 seconds. We know that's where it changed direction. And number three, that your height at 0, 0,7 isn't as high as your original height. Remember, I know it's not going to be as high because the final velocity after the second bounce isn't as much. And it doesn't rebound with the same velocity it hit the ground with. OK? That means we're losing kinetic energy. And some of the energy that the ball had when it hits the ground goes to the fact that it's going to deform. It's got to change direction. And that takes energy for it to change direction. So we know because it doesn't jump up with the same velocity it hit the ground with, it can't go to the same height. OK? So that one's quite nice because it just it's exactly looks like a bouncy ball. I like those graphs. And then the last question to do with this one, which we'll do before, you, before I give you a break, is is the first collision of the ball with the full elastic or inelastic? So we're trying to remember stuff. Hopefully you've started, well, you would have done elastic, inelastic collisions in momentum. So you're looking, you're going, I've actually really explained it to you. It's got to do with this. My, it hits the ground with a velocity of 4 and rebounds with a velocity of 3. OK? There's a change in velocity. That means it's got to be inelastic. So when we explain this, OK, we say, well, it's inelastic. And my reason is that my, there's a change in velocity. Okay, 
So the velocity, the initial velocity on the floor is bigger than the velocity off the floor. Okay, it's probably not the best way to explain it, but I, I'm hoping you understand what I'm trying to tell you. And because there's a change in velocity, that means there's going to be a change in kinetic energy. And as soon as there's a change in kinetic energy, we have an inelastic collision. Okay, great valves. So, first question down, time for a little bit of a break, and when we come back, we'll hit some momentum questions. So I'll see you in a little while.